Welcome to Casey's Kitchen and today I'm going to make Trudy's blueberry scones. So believe it or not when Trudy and Hap were married one of the things that Hap would come in and eat after a day out in the rose fields were her fresh baked blueberry scones. So not only uh, did she win the beauty competitions in the south but her baking was on point. So we are going to recreate her scones even though um, this is a little different than she used to make it Hers had a lot more butter, a lot more lard. Today we're gonna do the version of what I actually have just in my kitchen. So starting with uh, the ingredients, they're very easy with flour. I'm using the almond flour because that's what was available to me. I have two cups here of frozen blueberries. We're gonna use uh, some butter. We're going to use the uh, brown sugar, the white sugar, the baking powder, salt, and some heavy whipping cream. And in just a moment, I will tell you all the different measurements and how we're gonna put all that together to make Trudy's blueberry scones. So first things first, anytime you're in the kitchen, wash your hands. Okay guys, so now that we have clean paws, the first step is to preheat the oven. So I have mine going at 375 right now. By the time we get everything organized, the oven will be nice and hot and ready for the scones. So I'm going to take these lighter trays so I've used the darker ones and it tends to burn the bottom of them it's not as nice so the lighter trays covered in nice parchment paper and then I just sort of alternate them because I have a smaller oven and then our first step is going to be to take the flour we've got three and a quarter cup so that's three cups and also an additional quarter cup of flour we've poured it in this giant bowl because we're gonna add other stuff to it we're gonna add all the dry ingredients so we've got the flour We've got a quarter cup of the brown sugar. We've got a quarter cup of white sugar. We have a quarter teaspoon of salt. And then for the baking powder, we're going to use one tablespoon and one teaspoon. So all the dry ingredients, we're gonna dump them together in this bowl. Ta-da, not very hard. That's why I love this recipe. It's sort of a dump and go. And this is the moment of truth. Whee. Okay. And ever popular baking powder. And I love this little scooper. Okay. And I've got the one extra teaspoon, so don't forget about that. You got the tablespoon, the extra teaspoon. You're in all together. And I'm sure we'll have some uh, written links that show the actual measurements so you don't have to remember all this. And then now you have your dry ingredients. All you gotta do, stir them up, start to blend it, just grab a wooden spoon. That's it, your dry ingredients are ready to go. Now on to the other ingredients. We're going to use the butter. It's gonna be three tablespoons. And what's really important about the butter is to keep it cold until the moment that you're gonna take it out to dice it up. So you're gonna just take the three tablespoons, conveniently labeled on our unsalted butter, as one, two, three. And because that's the easiest way for me to do it, I just take a sharp knife and then go all the way down here. Perfect. I'm gonna put this back in the fridge. I'm gonna dice this up and then we'll go on from there. Okay, so now that we have the butter chopped up, we're just gonna take these small pieces and we're gonna put them around in the dry ingredients. There's no real wrong way to do this because we're gonna just mix it all up. So now that we have the butter in the dry ingredients, I'm going to take my little chopper here, which I think is actually made for garlic, but I do what I want, it's Casey's Kitchen. And I'm going to just start to put it here and smish it into the dry ingredients. Now, if you don't have a little nifty, this thing, um, two forks work. Some people have an actual masher, which actual name escapes me at the moment, but if you're in the kitchen doing this, you can basically make it work with anything. Grab a couple forks and do that sideways pull thing. And we're just gonna do this kind of forever until the 
substance here starts to get more crumbly until all that butter feels like it's kind of chopped up. Okay, so I have now sort of put the butter through here. You can see it's sort of crumbly, coarse crumbs here. So all that butter's mixed in here. And uh, because I had to know, the word we were looking for was pastry cutter, but um, I don't have one of those. So as you can see, nice and ready to go. I'm gonna use the two cups of blueberries. You can use uh, semi-sweet chocolate chips. Basically anything that you wanna put in there, that's all you. And I'm just gonna, I always feel like two cups is what the recipe calls for, but I always kind of feel like you have to gauge it because it depends on how much blueberry you want to be in there. Do you want blueberry with every bite or every other bite? And you just kind of play with it. Just go real like this here. Uh, pro tip, blueberry juice stains. So if you happen to leave it in your sink or let it drip on your wood counter, you'll be sad. So don't do that. But here, got the blueberries kind of worked in. And actually, I think it's okay on this particular batch to do all of them. I think, I think we're there. And then just gonna stir it up right nice. A very blueberry mixture here and you don't want to stir it too much because then you start to kind of aerate it a little more than it needs uh, so just kind of be cautious of not overdoing it I might have already done a little more than I should have but wouldn't be the first time and then for the heavy whipping cream uh, it's one pint two cups so basically I'm just going to open this if I can I got carpal tunnel hands. Wait for it. There it is. Oh, oh God, and there's another another boundary. It never ends. There we go. Oh, okay. I got it. I'm fine. Okay. Then you take this and don't just pour it all in a lump because I've done that and it's not as effective. So basically you're going to just kind of turn and stir And it's helpful if you have another hand, but it's okay if you don't. You just kind of let it turn into a little crumbly goo, as delicious as that sounds. Okay, so as you can see, it's kind of starting to be this gooey mess here. I'm just gonna start with the final pour. And actually, I usually use fresh blueberries and not the frozen ones. So this seems to be a little bit gooier than it ever has been before, but that's not gonna stop me. Okay, so now I'm going to take my gooey little scone pile here and just shape it however I want. And they do expand, so I'm going to make just a few giant scones and then kind of play with that. And then I just go right in there because that's how I roll, so. I just kind of move it back and forth. Nice gooey mixture here. Make that one a little smaller. All right guys, so I got my little scone patties ready to go. And uh, we're gonna stick them into the oven at 375 for about 20 minutes. As I mentioned before, the oven has been preheating. It's ready to go. So I'll see you guys in 20 minutes. All right, hey guys, so a-L-E-X-A -E just told me that the uh, scones are ready, so let's go take a look. Ooh. Nice. Nice. So they are giant. <laughs> They're huge. There you go. It's all right for all your breakfast needs. So um, I like to say that I'll... <laughs> I'll half them in the morning. I probably won't. And that's how you make Trudy's blueberry scones. So I'm going to finish up this batch, make myself a cup of coffee, and have a scone. Thanks for stopping by Casey's Kitchen.